Good afternoon to you. Mark Suttoth, HurricaneTrack.com, here with your hurricane outlook and discussion for Thursday, June the 7th, 2018. Hope things are going well for you. It's warm and muggy outside here in Wilmington, upper 80s, and I like it. I'll take it after the coolish winter that we had. I stepped outside to get the mail, and it was just kind of oppressive. I was like, whoa, that's some humidity coming back. But you know what? i got to admit, I like the warm season. And speaking of warm and cold, is that a good segue? I tried. This is a tweet from earlier, uh, yesterday, June 6th, from Dr. Phil Klotzbach. <clears throat> Excuse me, I have... Maybe I have grass pollen allergies or something. Who knows? Um, yesterday, he talked about this cold main development region being the coldest for June since early 1985, or June 1985. That's what I meant to say. The second coldest on record, or yeah, he says coldest, since 1982. And the only other colder year was 85, right? So then, and we've heard all about this, uh, this retort, if you will, from Dr. Rick Nabb, former director of the National Hurricane Center, currently at the Weather Channel. Well, while you're mentioning 1985, let's look at the map. And I thought that was pretty, um, what's the word I'm looking for? A clever response because this shows you that just because the main development region, and this is what I've, I have been talking about for the last several weeks, Maybe this is hostile, and you're not going to have much out here. But look at 85. We had six hurricanes that hit the U.S. that year, and one of those was Gloria. And for a lot of you out there that are around my age, you know, mid-40s or so, Gloria is what got you your start. And, heck, I mean, it was a big part for me. Hurricane Diana in 1984 is really where I got my start with an interest in hurricanes. And then a year later was Gloria. I live right here in southeast North Carolina, and Diana and Gloria both very close to my neck of the woods. That was a very busy season, 1985, in terms of impact. And look at the main thing here. North and west of the main development region is where these systems developed. And to that end, Gloria did get its start in the main development region later on in September, of course, but it's not cold. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to tell you. It's not like it's 55 degrees out there. Woo, it's chilly, and nothing's going to develop. In fact, it's starting to warm up. Here is the anomaly chart from today, the NOAA NESDIS method, and there are different methodologies and climatology background sets. Instead of showing all of them and then trying to remember which one showed what I have been consistent in showing this one, this particular data set, for years. I like it. I like the archives. And so that's what I've stuck with. There's just a whole bunch of different variations. And anyway, so this is what it looks like today. And let's change this color to, what, green? Maybe green will show up a little better. There we go. Yellowish green. This is the area that we're talking about. And let's compare that to a week ago. All right, so let me just highlight this area through here, roughly the main development region. That's what we're talking about. This is today. This is a week ago. And you notice especially right off the coast of Africa, right there, watch today. And just generally the overall warm-up. Yeah, it's happening. You're losing a lot of these deeper blues. They're trading up for lighter blues. And even, you know, around Florida and the Western Caribbean, it's filling in with warmth. The cold, uh, I'm sorry, the warm, uh, huge warm anomaly up here is also starting to break up a little bit, dissipate some. There you go. It was pretty robust a week ago and not so much now. So things are changing, probably owed to the fact that the NAO has gone negative. And so the trade winds are not quite screaming across here as much. And just the natural progression as temperatures warm up in the tropical Atlantic, because the sun angle is higher, we're not as cold versus the average. Does that make sense? So, like, it could be February, and maybe there are some 
you know, warmer than normal water temperatures out here by a half a degree, but the anomaly could be two degrees above um, the long-term average because it's February. It's relative to average. I know that's not making much sense, but now that things are warming up, the anomalies, the departures from normal are not going to be as extreme. It would be different if there was no warming at all and there was some mechanism, you know, like somebody parked an iceberg out in the MDR and it was just bleeding off cold water, melt water, and we never saw any warming. So now that things are warming, the change relative to average is not so dramatic. All right? So there you go. A week ago and now, and you can definitely see some changes there. And we'll monitor this. We'll see what happens. And let me point out, too, <clears throat> that Dr. Nab says that it does not mean, right there, it doesn't mean that this map will happen again this year. Uh, analogies and, you know, these, what we call the uh, analog years are not exact matches, but they can be a guide a little bit, all right? But don't confuse that for saying, oh, we're going to have another 1985. It's just strikingly similar. All right, moving along in the Atlantic, nothing yet, but that might begin to change. We'll have to wait and see. In the Pacific, of course, we do have Aleta, and it is a tropical storm, almost a hurricane. It will be a hurricane soon. It probably technically is now. I'll show you why. I think that in a moment. And then we have East Pac Invest Area 92E. Uh, remember we talked about that the other day? They get the numbers 90 through 99 for areas of investigation and the letter EP for Eastern Pacific, and we just shorten it to E, or at least I do. In the Atlantic, it's the letter L or AL, and we just call them 92L or whatever. So there it is. This is going to develop over the next few days. The cloud shot showing both systems. We'll switch back to red here. Aleta. And this is soon to be Bud. This will be a little bit closer to land. Aleta may come up here closer to the Baja before all is said and done. And here's the satellite presentation of Aleta. And there it is. You can see that eye trying to pop out right there in the central dense overcast. What's that? That's that circular area right there, the CDO. Excellent spiral banding. Kind of struggling with the spiral banding over here because this is coming across Cooler water, a more stable air mass, resides above that cooler water, but Aleta is still over fairly warm water for the time being, and it's able to strengthen. This is courtesy, by the way, of weathernerds.org, just so you know. The floaters from the National Hurricane Center site not happening yet is frustrating. Uh, I realize we have all this new GO-16 stuff, but... Anyway, it'd be nice. Hey, you know what? We'll just watch it here. That's fine. National Hurricane Center has other phenomenal products, and I'm happy for that. So we won't complain too much. I just miss the old days of the SSD. Remember the Satellite Services Division floaters? They were there. You clicked on them. You got a GIF animation. You were good to go. And it's just harder. That's all. But we have high-res you know, com um, satellite imagery now. It's like 4K. It's amazing. I don't know that it's 4K, but it's it's just incredible resolution. And so they're trying to figure out how best to do it, I guess. I don't know. We'll hope for a, f a floater section in the future. So here's the GFS for the Eastern Pacific as it runs. I'll outline California, the Baja right there, coast of Mexico, Central America, Yucatan, and Florida. There is Aleta getting closer to the Baja in this, this particular run of the GFS. One run, the operational deterministic run, yes, there are a bunch of ensemble members, but again, man, we could sit here for an hour and a half going through all the different ensembles. So this just gives me a good idea from the deterministic operational run of what looks likely to happen over the next five days. And a little closer to the Baja, but remember, the water temperatures up in this area are cooler, so whatever intensity a letter reaches in the next day or so, that will come down as it approaches the Baja, maybe some of this moisture can shear off and come into the southwest, igniting some moisture and then some storms. We'll just have to see about that. And then Bud tries to follow along uh, in Aleta's path right there. Hold on, let's get the pointer back. Right there. 
uh, and a little bit closer to the mainland part of Mexico. So overall, still no major impacts to the Mexican coast, which is good. Aleta probably going to bring some waves. I mentioned that the other day. So if you surf, uh, that could be good for you down there. And the people down there, they know this, believe me. Cabo and some parts of Mexico. I never got into surfing myself. Um, I like the beach, but I just, you know, didn't get into it. But those that are into it, boy, they know their sights and the connections to tropical cyclones and other wave generators out there. It's a whole different realm. You know about it. It's kind of like gaming and other things that people follow. Surfing is a big deal. So you guys follow that. And who are following that, you know where to find that information. And at least Aletta and Future Bud can maybe help you out a little bit in that department. Give you some bigger waves. So in the Atlantic, let's put this into motion. And just to give you your bearings, there's Central America, the Yucatan, come on around the Gulf Coast, Sunshine State, and the Delmarva. All right. And you notice right down in this area over the next few days, we begin to see an increase in the vorticity signature. The trade winds blowing straight across, and then it kind of changes up a little bit from east to west to more of a southeast to northwest orientation as some of this energy kind of rotates out of South America this gyre tries to set up again not quite the same setup as Alberto but there it is by about day five you get Genesis and by day seven right up towards the panhandle of Florida now this is probably too fast so just real quick since this is aimed oh look at that you know it's like it, very similar to Alberto. Where did that come from? So let's put this into motion again a little bit faster. And so this is hour 24. And we come up here to hour 48. Not much. That's two days out. There it is there. Two days. And so by day three, right there and beyond, there it is. And then day four. We'll stop it at 96 hours. Just a little bit of a hint in four days. There's future bud right there. And you can see how everything you know, is trying to sh form that shape of counterclockwise rotation at 5,000 feet in the atmosphere. And then the vorticity signature showing up there right in the middle. And that's 96 hours out. So either the GFS is just absolutely f just flawed and the physics are screwed up and we really need to you know, start over. Or it's doing a great job of sniffing out this so-called slight cyclogenesis and if we move through the frames to day five there's 120 hours out right there you know it's there you go I mean again that's only five days out I'm not showing you oh look at this 10 and 15 days out how some people like to do that to scare up trouble that may or may not happen usually it's the may not part this is 120 hours out and some of the other modeling starting to pick up a few of the members of the ensemble prediction system from the Euro, the Canadian, other models are beginning to sniff out this particular feature from day five on, even the UK Met. So we'll see. Uh, I think maybe another 48 hours from now, we'll see what the genesis looks like from these different models, and maybe we will see at the National Hurricane Center's homepage, let me go back there, possibly. Uh, my prediction is within 48 hours, maybe a yellow circle or X or whatever down there. That's my prediction. We shall see what happens. All right, so nothing to get too concerned with yet, but again, just kind of gathering around on YouTube. The YouTube campfire is a good way to call it, and talking about things. This is what I look at, and with this world that we live in, I can share all of that with you. I would be looking at all this stuff even if we had no Internet. Boy, how what a life that would be, right? Hey, wait a minute. That's what it was like in my childhood. How did we survive? Um, but seriously, this is a good way to just take a look at everything, look at it in perspective, in context, and we'll see what develops. Um, maybe something coming up out of the Caribbean into the Gulf next week. Maybe not. We shall see. That's the beauty of this is we can find out together. All righty. Any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section. That's a good place to do that. You can also email me, Hermark, H-U-R-R-M-A-R-K, Hermark, first four letters of Hurricane, H-U-R-R-M-A-R-K at gmail.com. And on uh, Mondays, I like to read some of the emails that come in. 
uh, call it the Monday mailbag, but we also might be talking about more activity in the Atlantic. Who knows? All right, have a great rest of your Thursday. I do appreciate you tuning in. I am Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com. I'll be back with more for you tomorrow.